Thanks everyone for joining in. Nice full house. We got the homie, the man, the legend, the myth. DJ Rizzi, Ravine in the building. Whoa, cool, just messed up my name, bro. I know, in my intro as well. In my intro. <laughs> I was going to do it perfectly. It sounds so perfect. Today, my main focus is to show you how to connect your DJ setup. And so you can stream off OBS to any platform such as Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube. I'm assuming pretty much all of you guys are producers. So you all have an interface, I'm guessing. Everyone's got like a sound card or something like that. Yeah, you will need you will need a sound card for this. Probably a lot of you guys have one of these. So just see. Does the focus right? Scarlet yeah. two I two. Yeah, pretty much. I'm sure most of you are using something very similar. Yeah. Um, that's what I'll be using today, and it works perfectly fine. Um, but anyways, let's get started. What you will need first off is a copy of OBS. So obviously, just go. Just type in OBS into Google. Should take you there. Grab a copy of it, just download the Mac version, right? And when you download it, you'll get something like this. And what OBS is, it's a streaming software that lets you stream to a lot of different platforms, whichever platform you want. And it runs off a principle called stream keys. So every streaming service has something called a stream key. And the stream key is basically like a password. You don't, you don't want to show it to anyone. If you give your stream key to anyone else, they can use it and stream onto your onto your account. Anyways, I'll show you what happens when you first open OBS. You get this up and we'll ask you to do this wizard stuff and all this, just cancel all of that. You go to OBS preferences and what you wanna do is go straight to stream and that's where you choose where you wanna stream to. So we'll go Facebook just for now. Personally, I don't really like streaming on Facebook just because it has a very, very heavy handed copyright. And if you're gonna be streaming DJ sets, Facebook just sends a message and goes, your stream has been cut off. We detected copyright music and they'll just cut your stream completely. So personally, I don't, I don't like streaming to Facebook, but since most people use Facebook, it's probably the place you'll get the most the biggest audience. I stream to YouTube personally, and I can show you how to do that in a second. All of them have this thing that says get stream key. Once you press it, it'll take you to wherever you go to create a live event. So what you have to do when you, to get a stream key first, you have to create a live event on, um, on YouTube or, or Facebook or whatever, but we'll go to that in a second. So what we're doing right now is just setting up the OBS software. So what you want to do is you go to output and when you get to output, it first comes up as simple, just chuck on the advanced because we're all advanced here. You want to go to, uh, your bit rate, right? This is, this is the, the data that you send out, how high quality your stream is going to be. And this is something that a lot of people don't realize is, you need to make sure you tailor your stream to your internet. And a lot of people don't realize how bad their internet actually is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to speed test. And I want you guys, before you guys all start streaming, definitely do this. And even do it before you start streaming every day because sometimes your internet's going to be bad. This is not what you need to worry about. Don't worry about your downloads. Your downloads could be whatever it, it, it wants to be. But we need to look at our uploads right now. So we'll see how, what my upload speed is in a second. Oh, there we go. All right, so that's about 20, right? So that's really good. 20 is fantastic. You can stream as high quality as you want. Now, a lot of people are going to have like maybe four, maybe five. And what you want to do is basically put your bit rate in as about half of what your speed is. So if you get five megabit, you got to put it in here about, well, exactly 2,500. If you're about six megabit, maybe about 3,000. Um, personally, I always, I stream at about 4,000 because it's like a happy medium. And then if you got housemates or something like that and they start using the internet, it's just, it's not gonna screw you over. But as a general rule of thumb, whatever your upload speed is, half that, chuck that as your bit rate. In terms of resolution, if you're streaming anything about 3000 and under, I would stream about 1280 by 720, which is 720p. If you're streaming 4000 or above, you can do 1080p, there's no problem. Okay, so next up, uh, the only other thing you need to change here is possibly CPU usage preset. So what CPU usage preset is, it's how much CPU gets used up to encode your stream. So when you stream out to somebody, your computer is basically turning whatever you're streaming. So the, your video, your webcam, whatever, into data and it's compressing it on the fly and then sending it out to YouTube, sending it out to Facebook, whatever. If you set this to a very, very slow, if you set it to slow, for example, what it'll do is you'll use, it'll use way more CPU, but it'll make your output look a lot nicer. 
Generally, you don't need to worry about this. I'd leave it on anything about fast and above. Anything lower than that, you get diminishing returns. But depending on how, how slow or how quick your PC is, the general region is very fast to fast is what you want to set it on. Okay, and the rest of the stuff you don't need to worry about. Here, uh, this shows you your recordings, audio. So this is also important, especially because we're going to be streaming DJ sets. I'd set it on 192 or above. So just uh, 192 is good. If your internet's poor, you can set that a bit lower, but that's not as big a, a bigger issue as just lowering this. If your internet's poor, I would lower it a bit, right? Uh, so audio, obviously you gotta make sure that's set on stereo. It should be on stereo by default. And this is video. So this is what determines how big your video is when it gets sent out, how high quality your resolution is. So I set mine on 1920 by 1080 as your base canvas. What your base canvas is, is this black screen right here. So it's whatever you put on this black screen is what will appear as, a, as your stream output. So I, I usually set it on 1920 by 1080. And then you can also do this, which is output scaled resolution. So what this means is when you send it out to Facebook, when you send it out to YouTube or Twitch, they receive it as a lower resolution. So you can do this if your internet's not just, uh, not very good. So a lot of people, I would probably set on 1280 by 720 if your internet's not very good. But if you do, keep in mind that if you do scale it, your computer has to do the scaling. So it's extra work on your computer. Um, and in that case, I would probably turn it onto like by cubic or something like that. It's basically how... Um, the algorithm that your computer uses to scale it. If you're not scaling it and you're just leaving it uh, as the same, which I normally do, just leave it on bilinear, uses the least CPU and it's, yeah, it's really good. Uh, and for your frame rate, I would leave it on 30, chuck it on 30. 30 looks the best to me. You can go lower, go to 24, 25, or you can even go 60. But keep in mind, if you do go higher, you are going to be using a lot more internet and it makes it, if you're not using a high enough bit rate and you go, for example, 60 frames per second, it looks crap. It's just like it, the movement might be smooth, but then you'll see a lot of artifacting when you move your hand, for example. Anyways, that's all you need to do here. We'll go into the stream key in a second, but let's set up our actual our canvas now. So we've got a blank canvas here. What you need to do is start adding things to the canvas. So firstly, you want to add a camera. So video capture device. And we can call that um, camera one, for example, enter. And now it lets you choose all the different cameras that you've got connected. I've got three cameras connected right now. The one you're looking at me right now is the game capture. It's a capture card. I've got a GoPro connected to it. It's a really cool way of um, setting up a camera. If you are getting serious about streaming, I would definitely look at doing that. But I'm assuming most of you would be either using your, hello, your webcam or uh, a separate webcam, which is what I have here. I, I prefer using a separate webcam. Quality is way better. It's a Brio 4K and it is amazing in quality. So you want to use, uh, I don't use the presets. I set it manually. So we're going to set this to 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second. Always keep the frame rate exactly the same as what you have set it in the settings. So, okay, so that's it. That's our video there. So we can scale it, we can move it around do all that kind of stuff we're just gonna stretch this out all the way uh you can also do some cool things such as transforming the image so for example i would rather my screen uh this be flipped around because then this is this not like a natural way to look at the dj setup so it looks nicer we can go uh rotate 180 degrees and there we go so now it's like that and you can even you can even stretch it out even more so say i just want I just want the DJ set up on there. We can stretch it out some more. And uh, yeah, there we go. I mean, that looks all right. You can see everything properly. Cool. So that's the video sorted. You can also just use your um, FaceTime camera. You can see where my mouse is right now. There's an eye there. We turn the eye on and off. We can show or hide layers on our canvas, but you can also use a FaceTime camera as well. Just the, uh, the camera on the computer. I don't normally um, I don't normally use this, but I mean, if this is the only camera you have, you can probably just set it up like that, put the decks here. It. Anyways, let's go into setting up the audio. The audio is usually the hardest part. It's just a lot of routing you need to do. But if you have a external sound card, if you have a focus right, for example, pretty easy. So all you need to do is go to audio input capture. And we'll just call it the Scarlet. 
and then just go to the Scarlet 2i2. That's it. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, that should be it. You literally, all you need to do is, I'm going to stop my screen share so you can actually see what I'm doing on the Scarlet now. All right. Three. So I've got my camera here. I'll show you guys. Um, in terms of DJ equipment, you will probably, uh, I'm sure most of you have something similar to this, maybe like a, like a DDJ 400 or something like that. I also have an XDJ RX2 down here. This makes it a lot easier to, uh, to set everything up because you have two outputs. So if you have two outputs, you could just put one of the outputs uh, and connect it up here to the input. So input one, input two, you can use one of the outputs on the XDJ RX2 and then you have the other output connected up to your speakers. However, not all of us have that kind of luxury. Most people will have a setup which only gives you one single output like this. That is just a single RCA. So what you're gonna need to do is grab a set of RCA to jack cables, all right? So we got RCA and we got jack. So RCA goes into the back of the J. And then we simply just plug that. Get a front and focus right. One and two. And you've got your gain knobs here just to set gain properly. Make sure that's set into line, line mode, line mode. And what you're going to want to do is have your speakers connected to the back of the focus right. And then you work, what you want to do is turn direct monitoring on. So that means when you play anything out of the DJ setup, you will also hear it out of your speakers. If you have this off, or you'll, you won't hear anything. So obviously, because you only have one output, you kind of have to chain them together so you get output onto your, your, um, your speakers as well. Okay, cool. So I'm going to open up Rekordbox DJ now. So that's fine. All right, sweet. So um, what we're going to do now is go into OBS. Once everything's all set up, you should be able to go to see on Scarlet. See it down here? So we got music. Perfect. All you want to do is just go and adjust your settings. I'm just gonna. I'm just adjusting on this focus rate. Just making sure they're right. And you can turn it up here as well. Just make sure it's just about hitting the reds. Cool. That looks right to me. And uh, that's it. You've got audio. You've got video. And uh, now all you need to do is set up your stream. So let's go and do that. Let's do it. Let's just do it for Facebook. I hate Facebook, but we're going to do it anyway. Facebook Live, get stream key. <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll do a mock stream. So when you click that, it takes you to uh, this page. Just click create live stream. Um, if you click share it to a page you manage, it will let you share it to, um, to your DJ pages. Or you can even uh, share it to a group. Let's just do it to your timeline. Your friends can see it. Live title test video stream hello this is a test and then you just go copy that stream key uh, paste that stream key okay now if I click start streaming here you can see in the bottom right here it's telling me um, how much internet is being used right now you want that to be green when it's green, it basically means your internet connection is stable. That shows you how much CPU you're using. You want to keep it just about that range. Another thing I want to um, I want to warn you about is if you are streaming and you're also DJing off the same laptop, I would remember how we were looking at that preference here before, and it's uh, like the very fast, fast, whatever. Set that as as uh, set that lower, at least one notch lower than you normally would would have set it before. So possibly if you have to run very fast, that's super fast because it will just chomp your CPU and then you'll get buffering and delays when you're DJing. So just keep that in mind. Now, when we go to here, you can see here on the bottom right, that's us. That's the stream preview. So that's what it will look like right now. And all you need to do is go live. So once we're ready, you just press go live and you should be live on Facebook. Cool, so now we're live. And then you see this live button right there. And that's it. So that's what's showing on Facebook right now. Uh, and that's about it. So we're done here. We could end the video. 
and sound works. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Sam Spade. Cheers. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that's as easy as that. That's how all you need to do to stream. You want to click stop streaming as well. I had some problems with the frame rate with the camera and all that kind of stuff. You want to play around with that. And one way that you can play around with it without actually streaming is by just clicking start recording. It does exactly the same thing. It uses the same amount of CPU uh, and all that kind of stuff. You see, it's like a little bit laggy again. You got to find the right settings that work for you. Um, I think it's because I'm sharing my screen with you guys and I'm also uh, have OBS running at the same time. It's kind of freaking out because of that. But this is a great way to test how your stream will look without actually streaming is by clicking start recording and then just doing a little test stream and stuff like that. And then you click stop recording and then it'll show up in your movies. Uh, there it is. Cool. And this will basically be exactly the same as your output on the stream. So what I normally do is before I, I um, if I have some new stream set up, uh, I've set up a new camera or something like that. I will do a test recording first just to see how it looks. Um, also, you wanna, you wanna uh, check your delay and latency because a lot of times, even though you can't hear it, once you record, you, it will put everything out of sync. Sometimes your audio will actually play half a second after you press the, the Q button, for example. It just it looks very jarring, and that's what will show up on your stream. So what you want to do is actually go here and press this cog button here. Advanced audio properties, that's the one. Okay. And there's something called sync offset. In general, I found pretty much uh, that the focus right has about a hundred millisecond offset. So if you go to the, the Scarlet, I chuck in hundred. What that'll do is it will play the audio 100, sec uh, 100 milliseconds after the video. So that way you can, you can work and sync it out. And you can find out uh, how that is, um, that affects your stream by just doing what I just did before, start recording. So I would start recording. And then I usually test it by pressing the Q button. Yep, that looks on time to me. And that's good. And then you're ready to go. All right. So that's the first part of this done. Has anyone got any questions? Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask, what's the name of that um, thing you use to check your internet? Speedtest.net. It's a very important thing because a lot of people don't, like they, they set up everything great. They set up their OBS and all that kind of stuff. They do all of that. And in the end, they're like, oh my God, my stream looks crap. It's laggy. It's uh, dropping frames and all that make sure you go and test your internet before you start streaming. And also, I would uh, also reboot the computer before you start as well and close as many apps as you can that use the internet. Because sometimes even stuff like Spotify, I've had Spotify um, just update itself in the middle of the stream and it just cuts frames. So just make <laughs> sure anything that's using the internet that's not necessary, close it because it can ruin a stream. Uh, anyone else got any questions before we continue on to a uh, how to get audio and stream stuff like Ableton? Cool. Uh, Man, so everyone wants to know if, uh, yep. if it's possible to stream on multiple platforms. I don't know if you addressed that already. Yes, it is. You can go onto a website called restream.io and uh, you can create an account here. I think a free account lets you stream onto two platforms for free. Uh, you can, so what this is, could you put that streaming. in the chat for us as well? Yeah, cool. I'll put that in the chat room right now. Restream.io. Cool. And see, uh, and that's the, and I'll show you, uh, my screen right now. I thought I was screen sharing. Sorry. So this is what Restream.io looks like. And it basically lets you stream to multiple platforms. You can see here, uh, Twitch. YouTube, stream onto LinkedIn to your to your colleagues if you want to, Facebook, whatever. Uh, it lets you stream on, I believe it lets you stream on, you can choose two of them for free. And it has like a two hour limit or something. I can't remember, it has, it's been a while since I used this. Personally, I don't restream. I don't like restreaming. I think it's, it's um, because you dilute your audience. You're pushing them onto multiple platforms or it makes it so like, oh, your fans are like, oh, I see it on Facebook. I'm going to go on Facebook. I see it on YouTube. I see it on YouTube. And it makes the number looks re look really small. Like you, you might have, 
I have a friend that does Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube at the same time. You go on Twitch, there's two people watching. On YouTube, there's like five people watching. And on Facebook, there's like 30 people watching. Just pick one. Seriously, it makes it a lot better. All the, you're, you don't have to monitor three different chat rooms, for example. I only stream onto YouTube. That way, I only have to look at one chat room and I can interact with my fans. It's a lot easier. Um, and the more often you do it, people will know when to come and watch your stream anyway. They'll be like, okay, oh yes, uh, DJ Irving, he's streaming on, on YouTube. I'm gonna go onto YouTube every day, 7 p.m., whatever. Only do this if you if you really, uh, if you're worried about your stream going down, for example, say you're streaming onto Facebook, uh, you might wanna do this and restream onto Twitch or YouTube at the same time, just in case your Facebook stream goes down. But uh, other than that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't restream. I'll just, uh, I'll just stream onto one platform. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you, uh, see you next time. Make sure you check out my stream tonight at 7 p.m. Yeah. Ciao. See, that's, that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. That's how you build your audience. Find every single moment you possibly can to tell people to watch your stream. <laughs> see you guys.